Hi there and welcome back. All right, so we've talked about it and now we actually need to set up Bootstrap within our LESS infrastructure. So to learn a little bit more about LESS, you can head over to lesscss.org. Here you can find out that it's a dynamic style sheet language. It helps us treat style sheets a little bit more like JavaScript. In that, we can use things like variables, mix-ins, other technology to be able to adjust our style sheets more intelligently. It's a lot of fun to use, and I really encourage you to get into it. And hopefully, throughout this course, I'll help you get a little bit more familiar with LESS and its benefits. But for right now, let's integrate LESS and use some of that intelligent pre-processing to help us enhance our website. On Windows, I'm going to be using an application called Prepros. Prepros is an application that's actually going to do some of the pre-processing of our less files locally on our desktop. Prepros is a brand new Windows local preprocessor. On the Mac, I encourage you to go take a look at CodeKit. It's just like it says, it's like steroids for web developers. It's an incredible app that does a lot of the thinking for you. It does cost a little bit of money, but I really encourage you to take a look. If you don't want to use Prepros, there is an application called WinLess. It's a general user interface, or graphical user interface, I'm sorry, for less as a preprocessing language right on your Windows desktop. But Prepros provides a lot of enhancements, even over WinLess, with some other files and some other things that you can do. So if you're on a Windows computer, I really recommend at least for this time, that you use Prepros. If you're on a Mac, you cannot go wrong with CodeKit. So now, let's integrate our site with Prepros. We'll do that by taking ClearStep, the folder, and just dragging it into our new project. You can see that Prepros kind of goes through and it skims our site and it finds some things that we might want it to process in the future. We have bootstrap.less and theme.less, so that's looking good. We also have our main.javascript that it, we might want to compile or manage variable names. That's really wonderful, as well as our bootstrap that we might want to do the same. Bootstrap.less is one that we will want to compile, but we can also see that by default we'll be compiling bootstrap.less to CSS forward slash bootstrap.css. That works out really well for our purposes. Within that, we might want to make some smart decisions first. Let's compress our CSS and also auto prefix our CSS. That might help us along the line. We don't need line numbers or necessarily strict maths, but we do want it to auto compile every time we save. So this is looking good. Let's compile it for the first time. We can see that our compilation was successful and let's check out our folder structure. If we go into our CSS, we can see that we've created a bootstrap.css. Let's take a look at it within the brackets development. We'll go to CSS and we can see that we're not showing anything quite yet, but if we refresh our file tree by right clicking, we can see our bootstrap.css. Bootstrap.css is made of a minified bunch of CSS, which is exactly what we need, because really we want our code to be as small and compact as possible whenever it's on the server. We don't actually need to see it in its regular CSS form. We're going to be editing our site, though, within all of its less forms, which, as you'll see if you go into the less file structure, a lot of different elements. You can see here that using less, we can zone in on things like alerts and badges and carousels and even buttons. We can do large-scale changes using very little code and then process all of those changes using Prepros or CodeKit if you're on the Mac to our final bootstrap.css. Then once we deploy our site to the browser, our code is going to be so tiny and our site is going to be very performant, which is important whenever we're dealing with this more broad scope of devices, such as mobile and tablets. We want our code to be performant. Finally, let's head up back to our index.html file and save one last time. Once we've saved it, let's see if we can generate a live preview within our browser using the live preview function of brackets. There we are, we have our live preview, and that looks a little bit different. I wonder what's changed. 
So now if we go to inspect our elements, let's pop this out and let's view this code. We have our bootstrap.min, plugins, and main. From the console, we can see that nothing is failing. And then whenever we go through to the head, let's see if bootstrap is being brought up. And it looks like not much is being shown. However, the comments are intact, except for we have this one line here. Let's see where that goes. Using this one line, we can see that our code is actually just being minified to one single line of CSS, no matter how many lines of CSS within our less document that we are using. So Bootstrap is successfully being brought up. Also, we have our main.css and our modernizer.min. So it looks like we're all hooked up and we're ready to get customizing on our site. In our next video, we're actually going to get started building our website, starting with the front page of ClearStep. So I hope you're excited to jump in.